Okay, friends, let's uh, let's try this walk again. <laughs> I ran out of uh, I ran out of film on the uh, camera on my uh, little uh, what the heck these called uh, flip camera. I got two of them, but I didn't I didn't pay attention to how much time I had left on the uh, internal hard drive, and apparently I was uh, out of time. So here we go. As I was talking. I was telling you about uh, being cold because you take all that medicine, that crap like that, it thins your blood out so bad you get, you, you know, you feel you're cold. So I stopped doing that and uh, I started getting uh, my blood felt better. In other words, I wasn't freezing my behind off. I've been drinking uh, green tea, green tea with ginseng and a touch of lemon. I've been drinking that. Uh, not so much coffee, you know, I have the coffee and, and I'd rather have the tea. This morning I had the tea instead of the coffee. So I'm alternating things so the uh, the body has a variety of stuff. But this will be the second walk because this is about where it quit before, I'm not really sure. But uh, I finished the walk to the corner and I was telling you about my hips. Well, I made that walk all the way up and as I get up here I'll tell you more. But I've got a friend called Lou, he's 80, 80 plus years old, that uh, I stopped and talked to. And him and I pray together when I come and see him. Well, I just bopped in on him. And uh, we sat and talked for a moment about uh, what I, I'm talking over with the Lord and how to proceed with this uh, cancer. And he said, well, if that's your decision, he said, let's just bind that and pray it to, to the Lord. I said, okay, let's do that, Lou. So he prayed over me and prayed, we prayed to the Lord. And uh, so for two, you know, that makes it work. You know, the Lord understands the prayer. He understands what, what is being asked, you know, that uh, it be a natural way and that he will... Uh, bring the healing with the wisdom of things to add to the uh, to the mix because Lou understood exactly what I was saying about no chemo and no radiation and uh, he also agreed about taking all them laxatives you see if I start taking a bunch of laxatives I'll get back into a irregular bowel uh, syndrome which will be no good for my body okay in other words when I eat anything it'll go right through me I mean, before the surgery, and a little bit after surgery, I was averaging a roll of toilet paper a day. I was spending more time in the bathroom than I was anything, really. And it was horrible. So, I can remember when the doctor said to me, I said to him about antibiotics, he said, well, we don't want to give you antibiotics because it might cause diarrhea. And then here in this, after that, uh, meeting with him, his uh, nurse comes up with all this list of stuff that I need to do. And when I seen that I was going to have to take three diff different types of uh, laxative, well, what does that do? That causes diarrhea. Okay, even in a healthy person, uh, I can't. I can't do that right now. So I'm going to omit that and wait till I'm feel stronger. Then you know, so I don't have that problem. It's just, uh, you have to do what you got to do. And you got to believe in the Lord and have Him in your heart. And uh, if you do that, then you'll find yourself uh, able to uh, survive this crazy world we're in anyway. You know, it takes a lot of prayer to get through this crazy world. You know, uh, that's why I haven't really been, I have a little bit, but not much followed a lot of the, uh, the uh, politics and stuff. You know, because I just don't want, I didn't want to deal with the stress. Because, you know, when you got hemorrhoids going on, the last thing you want is stress. So, I stayed particularly away from that. That's another reason. And, and the fact that I was pretty weak, I just didn't want to get on camera because I was in so much freaking pain. You know, so. But now, heck, here I am. I'm walked all the way up the block. You know, and I'm, I'm not feeling any pain, Okay. There's a difference here. Now I know there's a, there's a there's a problem on that left side a little bit. I know that's there, okay. But it's not overwhelming me. If you can understand what I'm trying to say to you, you know, it, when 
when your body becomes overwhelmed and your body has to dwell particularly just on that then it takes away your whole life it takes away your whole being so what you have to do is pray real hard and have the Lord put the, the right things in your possession to put you back in the right pos pos position you need to be in so you're not dwelling on one certain thing you know we are a multiple thinking human beings and uh, we uh, we need to have a lot of variety in our thought and what we're doing and the last thing we want to do is sit and dwell on pain okay because that could be your enemy because the more you dwell on it the further it drags you down so I feel right now that uh, it's subsided and I'm, I'm dealing with it you know I'm out here walking I did notice one thing that here lately I have uh, I find myself a lot more sensitive to things like you know I've talked to people a lot of people all over but it's been a while since I've talked to them and so I reached out to those individuals and I found uh, a good conversation you know I'm willing to listen a little deeper and uh, pay more attention you know because it because I mean our time we don't know what our time is we don't know how long our time is or how long we're going to be here or anything else you know that's just life so I uh, I've had a rude awakening to that again you know and that's a good thing you know wives always say well the husband never listens to me well that's because our minds are kind of narrow and uh, we're <laughs> we don't get involved in emotion too much but when uh, you reach that point and you realize what's what's going on around you and what what's how close things are that uh, you know this is the control that you thought you possessed the longer is control so there you freely give everything you have to the Lord you know I mean I mean totally once you've done that then uh, your mind is at ease because you don't have that uh, you don't have that wanting to control everything okay this is so important to control everything I'm gonna turn around here uh, it's not important uh, the important thing is just to pay attention and listen carefully and, uh, and and make sure you don't do anything rash okay you know, I'm not saying what I'm doing is good for the next person I'm not saying that at all but this is my choice you know the Lord gives me the free will and I've given the free will to him and this is where he's guiding me guys okay I'm being guided that's all I can tell you and then uh, we'll see what this adventure is you know, I, I don't want to bore people to death with my ongoing thing but you know to me it's important to me and uh, so many of you have written of how many in your family have gone through this and, and, and the things that they've had to endure and still you know like Max and Max Malone and a bunch of you other guys you know uh, when I heard about your mother and you know it, these things these are awakenings all right this is uh, this is like the angel standing up and oh, oh well, Mr. Mr. Vaughn hey old Marine I got a conversation to have with you here will you take time and listen well, this is why I read the comments, guys, and I take them to very seriously to my heart because uh, the Lord talks through us, and uh, the things are being said. It's very careful if you listen, and uh, then you'll more understand. But if you shut yourself off from the world, that's this is a crazy thing. You know, they want they want you sick with chemo. They want you to shut yourself off from the world. You not to have any any contact with people because of your your ability to your immune system is gone. You know, I mean, totally gone. So, you know, what kind of what, what are we talking about here? Is this uh, old-fashioned medicine or something? I, I don't know. You know, so right at this point, I'm going to do it this way because I I have no fear of being around people. I have no fear of walking down this street. I have uh, no reason to fear because I'm not hurting. You know, it's just like, okay, I'm out here walking. And it's uh, 40 some degrees and it's a beautiful day, even though it's possibly going to rain as they claim. But uh, I'm going to enjoy this while I can before the snow hits. And who knows? I might even bundle up and tread out in the snow. 
and the peaceful snow. Because every every part of your life, everything of life is, has a meaning, you know. It's just if you take time and listen to it. I know I'm bad with it. There, there he is. There's Lou. Here, let me show you Lou. Lou, Lou's the one I stopped and seen. Okay. This is my friend here. This is my friend in the Lord, Lou. Right, Lou? Did we have a good talk with the Lord? Yeah. Yes, we did, brother. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Yeah. I told him I was going to take this second walk. This is my brother, Lou. Hi there. <laughs> this is Lou. This is my brother. We'll give him a hug, guys. Yeah. I love you, Lou. I love you, too, man. God bless you, brother. But I'm doing uh, doing another walk here. Good. We had a good prayer, didn't we? Yes, we did. And yes. we believe. Yes, sir. We read. believe he's absolutely. You ask and he he will give. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Amen, brother. Yeah. Yes, sir. I heard a noise out here, and I thought, I hope I didn't miss him because I was tied up in the bathroom. Right. So, uh, but uh, it wasn't you on the porch. It was a cat. Actually. It was a cat on the porch. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Okay, there's a cat That's on the porch. Jack. He makes Jack. Sure. Jack makes the rounds. Yes, he does. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to get on this walk, Lou, and okay. I love you. Thank you for All your right, prayer. I love you, and you, you hang in there. All right. All right, keep looking up. Yep, we got to keep looking up. That's it right there. That's Lou, guys. He's a good man. Good man in the Lord. But this is what you have around you. So if you're, if you're, if you're sick and you're planning to go my route... Then get yourself up, get yourself out, get some CBD oil so you can do it, and uh, try to do this, you know. Because there's, there's people in your neighborhood that love you. There's people around you that will pray for you. You know, just like you have all of you out here have prayed for me. It means a lot to me that you pray for me, you know. Sometimes I don't feel I'm worthy. You know, only the Lord knows my worthiness. <laughs> I'm sure I'm not on his I'm not on his halo list. <laughs> anyway, I love you guys, and uh, I'm gonna continue this walk. I can feel a breeze coming in, but you know, here we are in, in January, and I just thank the Lord for the weather we're having. You know, uh, it's, it's it's wonderful. But uh, I'll uh, close out now. As you can see, I'm walking back towards the home, and I just want to tell you, hey, hug them kids, hug that wife, and uh, know that Jesus Christ is your Savior. Just call out to Him. Call out to Him for the help you need in your life. Give Him a chance. Please give Him a chance. He's there. He's never gone nowhere. He's here as of yesterday, today, and tomorrow forever. He is who He is. We love you, friends. So God bless you. On January 7th, 2019, a walk with the old Marine with cancer. God bless you, friends. Bye-bye. We'll close out on the, on the scenery in the sky. Bye-bye, friends. I'll talk to you later this afternoon after I go see the doctor. Bye-bye, friends.